Reno. And in 2017 was the last time we did any kind of parking lot expansion. And that was done over at Cow Creek. The, there's a small gravel parking lot over there. And, and that facility can, uh, can accommodate approximately 40 vehicle and trailer units. So again, this is to kind of demonstrate, you know, um, we've been trying to meet the public demand as this peninsula continues to grow and there's pressure and it's no different than we treat any other place across the state, uh, specifically along the Missouri River. Um, we try to uh, balance our budget within um, our means and identify and prioritize those areas that have the highest demand that we need to address with additional parking and additional boat ramp lanes. Next slide, please. So when we are looking at um, places to do expansion, whether it's boat ramps or boat ramp parking, there's a lot of factors that we that goes into this. And specifically on this peninsula, um, we are somewhat landlocked. And so I just wanted to, um, again, share with, with the, the public here um, some of the concepts and ideas that we have to take into consideration when we're looking at what is the most economically feasible, what is the best thing for the public, and, and, and all these other factors that go into kind of really determining where is the best spot that we can, um, again, accommodate and provide access to our public user base. And I won't go through them all, but you know, there's, there's many things specific to this peninsula. Um, we've got cultural resource sites on this peninsula that are very sensitive that we've got to work through the Corps of Engineers and, and other programs that we've got to be sensitive to those ideas. Topography, the amount of, of drop that this area sees with the water elevations. Um, and, and specifically when we're looking at boat ramps in particular, um, we really got to key in on those sites that are most conducive to it. Um, it. It's much more expensive for us to go into an area where we have to add a lot of material to the bottom if we really have a significant drop off in depth. But we also want to take into account where, um, where we do put boat ramps, we want them to be sustainable and we want them to be able to be effective on both the extreme high and extreme low events. And folks that have been out here for a number of years and have seen the fluctuations in water, um, you know that how challenging that is to address both high and low water. Um, back in the mid 2000s, um, like Milwaukee really went through a low water period of time where th th this, this division spent a lot of money creating low water access ramps. Um, and when we do have that here at Spring Creek, um, the water levels right now, we're, we're not even be able to see that ramp yet because we're we're still above that elevation that um, that, that would be exposed. But again, um, our goal is always to try to take into account all the factors so that we can, again, provide the best access that we can. And, and fortunately, um, for our users, we were able to do that in the mid-2000s, and hopefully we can, um, should we have low water levels to that extreme again, um, we've got a lot of those ramps already in place that maybe with some um, some delicate um, touch-up work that we can, again, open those um, low water ramps back up. So again, uh, this peninsula is, is not unique to uh, the Missouri River where it's got its own challenges. And so um, I, again, I just wanted to share the, the several factors that go into the planning, my, my team, the planning staff into determining where's the best spot that we can do this. And, and so, and so on and so forth. So uh, next slide, please, Al. Um, here I wanted to demonstrate um, the really the high levels, maximum pool elevations. So the dark blue line here is the maximum operating pool for Lake, for Lake Milwaukee. Um, I went ahead and put a dotted black line in here that, that um, demonstrates where we're at right now, approximately 1592 elevation. And then, like I mentioned before, back in the mid 2000s, we went down to in that 1577 area. And you can see it does generally follow the shape of what the peninsula looks like. Um, but there are some, some unique things that happen in there where um, we, we look at those kinds of things when we're looking at, again, putting in a new boat ramp, for example. We've got to be able to accommodate both high and low elevations so that you know, we're doing our, we're not wasting money building something that can accommodate those extremes. And so um, that really limits us on where we can, we can choose. And so again, just wanted to demonstrate that um, that's a, a, another factor that's very important when we're talking about, again, trying to serve the public with um, having access at those extremes. Next slide. <laughs> That was kind of the north end, and this this is the same picture showing kind of the south end of the peninsula. 
Um, here at Spring Creek, you can see um, the bay where the marina is shrinks up very dramatically when we get down to those extreme levels. And so um, it, it's challenging and we have to take that into consideration. And um, we've got a great boat ramp designer on staff that knows Lake Milwaukee as good as anybody um, in the state of South Dakota and um, takes tremendous pride in making sure that we're, we're choosing good locations that are sustainable for our department or a good use of the taxpayer dollars that we're putting on the ground. Next slide on. So um, taking into account all of those factors, the planning staff and I um, have come up with a proposal for our preferred expansion. And we're here tonight to kind of just present the general area where we think that it's most conducive for a new boat ramp. And um, again, to take input so that we can uh, make sure that we haven't missed anything so that we can take a comment from the public to make sure that, hey, you know, this is this is the best, the 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 best spot um, considering all of the factors that we have to take into account. And um, just to give you a little reference, here we have Lighthouse Point over here, and our proposed location is just to the west of Lighthouse Point. Um, there's several, all of these points are somewhat conducive to being able to put in a long boat ramp that can, again, accommodate both high and, and low level extremes. And the other main factor in choosing this location was the ability to have, um, you know, an ability to expand parking to be able to accommodate growth over time. You know, we're not looking at building a huge parking lot right away, but we're looking at a landmass base that can accommodate parking if and when um, the development and the public demand um, requires that to happen. And so we, we, again, we're looking at a lot of different areas, somewhat landlocked over here to be able to do some substantial parking expansion that would make sense. And so again, looking at several different points, both, both on the north side of Cal and down here at the closer to the Spring Creek area, this was the location that we identified. Um, but we're still very early in the process. Again, we want to be able to give the opportunity to the public to kind of make comments on that preferred location and what it, and what it potentially looks like. So we don't have full blown design or anything before we get into that hiring a consultant to do design work on that. We want to make sure that we do our diligence to make sure that. Um, we can accommodate uh, the, any public comments that maybe, um, maybe again, something that we haven't noticed when we took everything into account to having something proposed. And in addition to the new site, um, that would be a proposed new boat ramp with at least two lanes or more, and then to accommodate parking. Um, we've, we've also identified Lighthouse Point as maybe an area that also could be conducive to adding a third lane and adding some additional parking there. And so that is another option that we came up with that, that, that could be done. Again, balancing all the factors that we have to look at. Um, those are the two kind of locations that we've identified as, again, the most economically feasible to be able to accommodate both boat ramp expansion and boat ramp parking expansion to, again, accommodate the demand potential of this peninsula that continues to grow. Next slide, please. Um, I kind of wanted to show a, a graph here that kind of indi that indicates the water levels that we've seen uh, on Lake Milwaukee. Um, you know, this data goes back to um, 1968 through um, late 2021. Um, currently we're at elevations around 1592, which is down in this area. And so you can kind of see that over time we've had several dips um, in low water levels. And I referenced the mid 2000s one where we had the extreme event there. Again, um, relaying the importance of being able to um, make plans to again, accommodate the chance that we could see levels like this again, so that we can again, provide access um, to the public, um, access to the Missouri River. Next slide, please. Um, I've also got the um, last report from um, the Corps of Engineers. They put out a monthly report on um, their projections, and um, we follow these models extensively to be able to kind of help us predict our management strategies for the upcoming year. Um, the, the, the information the Corps puts out is the information that we have the best available for us to make management decisions, and I'll use the marina, for example. Pat and his staff look at this data 
with a high level of frequency to determine management practices that we have to do to make sure that we, we keep our assets here safe and sustainable. Um, we don't wanna have anything beached. And so um, again, we're looking at this information. This is available on the course website. Yeah, just wanted to indicate it. Um, and, and what we're looking at very typically is um, we'll, we'll see spring runoff. Um, uh, generally the most water that we see to raise the elevation here on Lake Hawaii comes in late May into June and early July when we get the snowpack melt from the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, and we're actually hoping to get, as we get further into the spring, we're hoping the, the accuracy of this forecast improves. Yeah, yeah. So the, the forecast really goes off seasonal averages. And, um, you know, in the Rocky Mountains, we can see extreme events of snow, and especially in March and April. And so the accuracy of these, I think we really need to wait to see until April to be able to really be able to tell where we're going to be at on Lake Milwaukee, again, based on that late season snowfall. But the indications right now are that it's average at best, the snowpack in the Rocky Mountains. Um, we had above average prairie snowpack as of a few weeks ago. We're starting to see that melt now. Um, but again, the majority of our water comes from that Rocky Mountain snowpack. And so, again, um, we really look into these numbers, March and April, to to see what the snow is doing to, again, be able to predict with much level higher of accuracy if we need to change our management strategies up here on the peninsula based on what the predictions are from the board. Next slide, please. That's all we have for tonight. Um, again, I wanna thank Pat and his staff for um, getting everything set up here. And at this time, what we'd like to do is um, ask if there's any questions specifically about boat ramp, Boat ramp expansion or parking, boat ramp parking. Yeah, one of the key elements that's part of this discussion is when we're looking at topography to build sites is having adequate space above that to develop the parking. And that really limits us down to only a few choices. So, sir. Steve Weidner, this is just a curiosity question. That area for your new boat ramp? was closed off for camping a number of years ago. There's a foreign fair fence down there because of archaeological stuff. How's that play into this? Um, certainly if there's archaeological sites, but yes, we we are asked, we are required. Um, so is that, I guess, is that going to be feasible? Because if you drive around those trees and follow that trail, that was closed off for years ago. I guess, Steve, was yeah. that that camping was closed off when the concessionaires came in? No, no, no. From there Fox. used to be an old cornfield fence right down there by that. You can see it on that map you had the old trail around those trees. Okay, so to answer your question, every place we're going to go, it's got to be cleared by the core. Yeah, so and I wonder, is that going to cause you some grief? Because that's what I was always told. That's the reason how it, it could, but we'd have to off. develop. Complete plans to get to the core to determine the amount of uh, development there before they could even make a determination. Yeah, I don't have to. Rick. That's what I, you know, I'm afraid you go out and start digging. You know, well, we're not, we're not giving you that stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, no, but, and, so. and we, have, we have got a database that, that allows us to look at known archaeological sites, but that doesn't mean that there's not something else mm -hmm. there. Or may require us to do survey work to be able to determine if there are other sites. But we try to do avoidance with this plan that we developed. We were trying to avoid any areas that were known sites that the state knows about that they've got marked, earmarked as known sites. Yeah, third year, four years ago, that was one of our favorite camping spots, and then it was pulled off. Sure. Well, thank you for your comments, Steve. Sir, I just wondered about out here, you know, what we have supposed to course. There's not much room between the shore and the boat. Is that something kind of shrinking boat slip, slip area so you can go by there this spring or? Well, or, or get closed while well basically a, a management decision that we're going to be waiting for in the spring because priority there is to keep the the, the bay open for boat right. traffic in and out out there, and we've got to maintain a minimum corridor between that boat ramp to the shoreline, and if we're not able to do that, then we're gonna to have to make some other plans as far as what's happening with our boat slips yeah, for the future. 
the minimum space you're talking about is that for the big boats or small boats? That would be for for any boat to, <clears throat> to get through there. Yes, your, your new area over there is that uh, gonna? Do you have any kind of plans yet drawn up? Or? Not. I don't have any. We have put forth the effort in really defining plans. We'd be getting in front of ourselves if we did that already. Yeah, I was kind of curious about all the trees in there, what they would be doing if they take them off for parking. I wouldn't say that that wouldn't happen, but if they were removed, they would be replaced. And you're going to have the tree hunting in there, too. Yes. I wanted to, to take you down the road, maybe three, five, even, even 10 years. We're looking at the development we have here, and I think you said something like 300,000 people or cars uh, coming here. This is going to continue to expand. So while I appreciate your efforts to put in another 20 or 30 boat parking slots, is that even a, a number given what we're likely to see expanding here in the next three to five years? I would just say every area has its capacity. We are landlocked, as Adam talked about. We can only provide a certain amount of services here. And it doesn't matter where you go. If you traveled up to Bush's Landing, uh, you know, in the peak of the years in the late 90s, you'd be sitting there waiting for some time to get your boat launched. We're we're trying to be proactive and get out in front of this because our managers are seeing what's happening on the ground. Um, <clears throat> yes, we're going to add additional spaces. Are we going to accommodate every resident here to be on the water and have a place to park that day? I don't think that's realistic. And the preferred site that we did choose is would be potentially much more substantially than 20 or 30 spots you mentioned, where we're talking over 100 or 200 spots possible. Again, we're not going to put a 200 parking lot spot right there right now, but if the demand dictates that we do that, we want to be able to have the land base that we can expand parking. What, what kind of time frame are you working on? Again, I think it's going to be based on the public demand. The, the, the rate of growth on this peninsula will kind of dictate. No, I, I'm, I'm asking, are we likely to have additional ramp space and parking for this coming fishing season? No. Five years down no. the road, what no. are you talking about? No, no. Um, at a minimum of a couple of years. Um, just the, the core process alone getting permitting um, takes six to 18 months. And so we've got to have the, the plans done. We've got to go through um, the archaeological side of things to get clearances. We've got to go to the core to get permitting. And at minimum, it would take that long. But again, you know, we want to try to be proactive about having that plan in place so that we can start that process to get those things cleared. So that <laughs> and we can, we're then able to be able to be reactive to a, a spur of growth that ends up dictating, hey, we really saw way more challenges in 2023, for example, than we saw in 2022. And we're going to rely on our, our field staff to be able to articulate that to us on what they're seeing, what they're hearing from the public, on what kind of challenges are we hearing so that we can then grow in accordance with what the tenants are really doing. How about the old, where they used to have the cell phones on the corner? Is that a potential? Or we, we look at the potential for that. Um, it possibly one of the biggest issues that we have there is getting public to the site. So there's a lot of residential property between the asphalt road to that location. Um, there's some other restrictions there, but we haven't done a lot of surveying, but that has been discussed. Yes, Tim. Um, I was also wondering, are you also looking at potential is there any spots or locations on Cow on the Cow Creek side that could be a potential site? So looked on the Cow Creek side as well. Part of it is the shoreline topography. Gotcha. Uh, we don't have the depth water yeah. like we do over here in Spring Creek. The soils are actually different mm -hmm. here versus over at Cow. There's a lot more gravel. The shorelines are, you know, we get a lot of cut banks. Um, over there, we see more siltation. You can tell by the Cow Creek Ranch sure. there. Um, we have looked at that site. One of the biggest other factors is that the space up on top to develop parking would either be a long ways away from where we could develop a boat ramp. But what I can say is we're considering all possibilities. Sure. 
Yes. Down here at Spring Creek, there's a lot of trees over here. Most of them are scrub trees and most of them are dead. Is that something you'd have to go through the core to take out to add more parking? Um, as far as any ground disturbance, we would have to work with the Corps of Engineers on. Even so though now, if they're cut at ground level, we can perform those duties. And we actually do provide permits for firewood cutting for individuals that would be interested in that. But any ground disturbance activities has got to be worked through the Corps of Engineers. Over at Cow Creek, they took a lot of dead trees out above them and the old full parking at the top. They didn't take any stumps out. So you Correct. can't park in there. You'd have to go through the core to do that also. Correct. Main main problem I see is is parking. Yep. Right? So the are okay. Is the Cow Creek ramp still in the water? Is there still concrete in the water? Yes. Yep. Is the for, low, the, for the primary ramp you're referring to? Right. Yeah. How about the little water ramp? Is that concrete still under there? Yes, the is concrete's it? still there, but once we get to a certain elevation. Now, the primary ramp, I believe, goes down to 1585. That doesn't mean there hasn't been some siltation on that since we were last at that elevation. But what we need to happen is we need the low water ramps to daylight so then we can do some work on those ground <coughs> turnaround. They're quite saturated right now. The turnaround is pretty good shape over there. I've been driving. It's, it's, not, it's not bad, but it will take some time for a contractor to get your pickup truck on there, yes, but to get uh, B and B's loader yeah, over there right. to get it some compaction, but we're we're we've developed overlaps so we could hopefully still have a primary ramp in service while we're working on those low water ramps. That was part of the engineers' plan when they started developing these in the mid two thousands. Yes, you had a question. Has the Game Fish and Parks Commission giving you a budget for for this venture, or are you just trying to do the plan and then hopefully ask for money later? Actually, that's why we're here today. We're asking you all to leave some money at the door. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'll let Adam. <laughs> so, um, you know, my responsibility, my team, we put together the capital development budget each year, and again, that's based on our overall um, division budget. Uh, we've got our, um, our our staff, our field staff, um, it takes up a good portion of it, and then the capital development is kind of what's left over. And the GFMP Commission um, does not have to approve ours. Ours goes through the legislative process, and so our budget from the parking division is has gone through the legislative session and has approved through there. And so as we've got some money budgeted right now for engineering and design. And that's all we've got right now is just budgeting money for engineering and design. And so, again, this meeting is to make sure that we are going to be um, moving forward with a consultant with the right idea, right concept that 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 both fits our budget, fits all of the considerations that we have. Before we get to that point, we again wanted to. But a project such as this, we submit in our Coast Guard grant funding. Yeah. Um, so we you would have a better idea of what those anticipated costs may be. Of course, they're about double now than what you anticipate currently, but that's kind of our the process we'd be looking the, at. The last ramp that we built was yeah. over at uh, Lake Ponset in the northeast part of South Dakota, and we spent over a million dollars on that ramp. Uh, a multiple lane boat ramp with approximately 100 parking spaces. That's pretty flat ground. Yeah. There. Here's Go. Question for Al. Um, a little bit earlier, you had that chart up here before provides and they update it every month. Go to the uh, continued drought cycle. There's three different sets. The one I normal flows, the other is above average flows, the other is lower basic continued drought as I thought. I'd be curious what they say on Labor Day if we continue in a drought cycle. So uh, the middle section <laughs> We've got Lake Oahe and you're referencing Labor Day. Labor Day. So uh, we've got the end of August at 1583. Which is what five feet lower than it was last year? Basically, yeah. 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 Probably yeah. seven feet lower than it was on. Yeah, correct. I so think again, that's I know you have those numbers by. <laughs> <laughs> So he's trying to fool us here. Again, one big snowstorm yeah. could change those numbers. Yeah. Oh, one big drought could take first. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, you know, that's the reality. But I think everybody should have in the back of their mind that 
this could be the year we end up transitioning more. You did some last year, more of those low water ramps, yep. including Cow Creek and, and uh, the other one over here. Yeah, the lighthouse. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And we're actually making plans for those, you know, getting contracts in place for those contractors to be able to move very quickly if that time counts. Wait. Yeah, I just want to uh, commend you guys for doing this. I think you picked the right spot where you had that red thing. And I, for one and all four, you got going ahead and doing what you're doing. I think you're ahead of the game for what you can do here and appreciate what you're doing to, to make it better. Appreciate that, Wayne. Question, yeah. I know you're not talking about slips, but I'm curious about the slips. So we'll wait. I'll, we'll hold that question until one other. Yes, Brandon. <laughs> but the only question I've been asked all day by several people was why why don't they look at putting in a ramp over at Okobojo where it could fit, where you have like site one or you have the depths to get to those deeper waters so you can. I think yes. part of that discussion is uh, we've got two miles of poor road going into there Absolutely. that we've already looked at, which is millions of dollars. Right. Sully County's not looking to expend a lot of money there. That's probably the biggest reason, sure. Brandon, as you know, yeah. Boats aren't getting any smaller, and they don't like gravel roads, it's and they're certainly not going to appreciate that road going into Oklahoma. Oh, I'm not a road with a generous character name. <laughs> <laughs> it's like pinball. Yes. I got another question here at Spring Creek. How long did it take the Corps to give you go-ahead to take out trees and stuff? You got to jump through a lot of hoops. I'm, Sean, do you want to cover that? Yeah, it's all dependent on the project scope. And what the known resources might be there, um, you know, the landscape for those sorts of things can literally change drastically, fifty feet apart, uh, just based on uh, what's there. And you know, we are running into all the time that that those processes, the laws that mandate that we uh, adhere to those core rules, are interpreted more heavily and they're scrutinized at a higher level all the time. So, um, depending on you know what all we're doing this one this sort of project would require a land base um review for cultural resource but there's also water-based uh regulatory permits that are going to be required and so um we're running into some projects that are going to stretch out to the year plus category just to get reduced on so the corps of engineers right now their direction to us has been a, a zero net loss or gain so if we add anything into the reservoir, we got to take an equal amount out. So they do not want to lose any capacity within the reservoir. So that's something to consider as well. That would we'd have to get a 404 permit to do that work um, below that uh, high water mark. So there is some there is some permitting, some clearances beyond our control, and we don't dictate the timetable that those take place. Any other questions regarding lake access? Yes. What's the usual, usual elevation of Lighthouse Point? Lighthouse Point, actually, that ramp goes down to 1575. So actually, that's why it's one of our preferred sites. It's got a lot of deep water down there in front of it. It's, it's protected at these low waters. It's got points on either side. So as you guys know, when you're on Lake Wadi and everybody's waiting the last minute before a storm to come in, that's a semi protected environment over there, which, probably which is good. beneficial. So that's why we feel we can add another 20 feet to the west side of Lighthouse Point and develop another launching lane and have, we've got parking capacity there and there's an opportunity to increase capacity in that, in that adjacent area there. Does that answer your question? Anybody else? How far is Spring Creek going to water? What's the level of that? This one here, this one actually is about as deep as any of them. I believe this one goes down to 1574 on the low water side. We built that again in the mid 2000s when we did the work on and that. It's not all four lanes that goes down to one lane. Right. It gets down yes. To that point. It, it would be a two lane point. ramp once we get into the water. It's the deepest ramp on both of them. Yes. yes. It's just the right. deepest because of the docks. That's why you had to close it last, late last fall. Actually, the area was closed because we got pinched. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. of yeah. the shoreline. We were gambling. Yeah. Otherwise, 
it was moving everything out of here. Yeah. So, and we got into the winter season where there was a lot of pressure. We had another ramp was closed. So the yeah. best opportunity we had to just close this to public access as far as navigating out with the boat. Yes. Well, I'll just get a giant excavator and just rip the dirt out there and pass by the tree to get it issue. I think it was discussed before. Just to be it's been discussed before. And once again, with all that permitting product that we discussed, yeah. you know, and once again, this we discussed these when we moved the marina in here in 2012. We had the conversation in this exact room, if I right, Doug? So we talked about that and the amount of money it would take to do some excavation that may be short lived, maybe one year worth of benefit. And, you know, for a taxpayer that I am, um, I'm pretty conservative and we just wanted to make sure we're doing right by everybody in South Dakota by making those decisions. It's also pretty darn steep there. I know it's been brought up about a long reach excavator, but you'd actually have to have a pontoon in the water for them to work on right now. Yes. Talk about access and getting out to fishing, which nobody, nobody everybody thought about fishing, but down at Farm Island, you guys put in a really awesome canoe, a kayak, little launch thing. You yes. That here somewhere because it seems like there's huge demand over there, and it would, it would take traffic off of the ramp that you could launch kayaks and canoes from some kind of beach or access point. It's not really a convenient point for the that up here. But no, that's a great point. We just actually met with uh, our fisheries access staff just this afternoon. And met with the folks at Farm Island. So those are the types of ideas that we're looking for. Uh, for instance, we're looking at possibly a similar structure over at Cow Creek that would be off our gravel overflow lot that we could possibly have like a rolling courtesy dock that would, but anyway, not to go into a lot of detail, yeah. just the planning thoughts. We're talking about that stuff all the time. And if there's an opportunity there, um, Yes, I think we're we're driven to try and get people on the water by the types of whether it's a kayak canoe or some inflatable on the water. But just dumping a ton of sand or even that finer gravel somewhere just to make the shoreline more palatable instead of the giant boulders. Even. That's that's one of the things we face here. I mean, you're dealing with riprap. Yeah, the riprap's protecting the shoreline. You dump ten thousand dollars worth of sand there. It may be there for one season, yeah. and next year you're dumping ten thousand dollars of sand. Yeah. I don't know that, but I sold my boat a long time ago because I got tired of sticking money in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Where did you get your walleye? I ice fish. <laughs> now is when I have time. And my horse man, I was telling Scott, I'm a sucky ice fisher. <laughs> I've been going hungry. Yeah, we got like about three people that are online. Uh, I mean, just give them a chance if they have any questions or comments. Uh, anybody online have any comments about the discussion tonight about access here? This is Bruce Peterson, and uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, I think you're heading down the right path. Uh, you know, you have to plan for the future and. I think getting those plans out so people can see them is probably an important issue for uh, all the residents that live close to the water. You know, like there's a few, you know, we'd like to see what you have, but we're not, we're thinking you're doing the right thing. And so uh, as soon as you get plans, it would be nice to see them. Okay, thank you, Bruce. Thanks, Bruce. Anybody else online? Yeah, this is Butch Ableseth. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm right in front of the parking lot there, just down from Bruce. And I'm wondering uh, if you expand the parking there at Lighthouse Point, which direction you plan to go with the parking lot? <laughs> um, there's a lot of considerations there. We've got some uh, mode area that we already use for overflow. Um, there's some potential to move kind of northeast up where that road kind of uh, lies there. But right. go ahead, Butch. Yeah, yeah, that 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 was just kind of my question. Yeah. Uh, 
just kind of what what you were thinking there. You know, we, we don't right now. We don't have that many days that we need overflow. You know, I mean, there's what maybe ten days a year or something. You know. Yeah, and that's that's going to change very quickly. Um, you know, and basically all we've done now, Butch, is kind of make bubble diagrams as far as where we feel we could establish some parking. So that's been the extent of our planning. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else online? Anybody else in the room? Questions? Boat ramps? Water access on the peninsula? Going once. <laughs> can we go below the dam? What's that? Can we go below the dam? The question? Can you go? As soon as we're done here, we'll open. I'll, I'll hang around. If you guys have questions, I'll certainly try to address them. Because if I don't know, I usually make stuff up. <laughs> That's why Al's here to keep me in check. So there's no other questions. I think we can close the Zoom portion of the meeting and and then we can, um, um, what our plan is, is to get um, uh, kind of an overview of what this meeting entailed. And we're going to put it on the Spring Creek website. So those that weren't in attendance or um, your neighbors, if they want to have a reference to what was, was talked about here, we want to address the, the concerns and questions that came up and answers and, and provide that so that um, you know, we're transparent with the public here on, on uh, what the plans are. Yeah, I just want to say, I sincerely appreciate you guys took your time this evening to come and attend the meeting. I mean, this is how the process is supposed to work. Uh, we, we value your input. Um, if we don't get it and we proceed first, sometimes it comes back to haunt us. So, but you guys live here. I would say, you know, your peninsula, your area, your residence, um, you see what's going on here. Um, and we're just trying to be proactive for this development in the future. So, but with that, I guess we're gonna, did you have a question? Just a, just a quick one, what are what are the next steps? What is your timeline now? When can we expect another meeting, another update? Good question for you. This is the part where I make it up on. <laughs> Honestly, we're probably gonna go back because we didn't hear a lot of people that objected to either one of these sites. So we're probably gonna put some more time into you know doing some further studies, maybe development, um, capturing some costs. First and foremost, we're gonna have to go through and make sure that these lighthouse probably isn't a concern from a, a cultural player standpoint. The other site, you know, we don't want to get the cart in front of the horse. We want to make sure we make that determination before we put a lot of money and effort into that. But that would be our next step. Yep. Any other yes. questions? This is Moni Simmons, but I apologize. We're online. First of all, we want to thank you for your time. But second of all, can you share what the URL address would be to that Spring Creek website? Yes. Thank you so much. I, I will email it to you, Ms. Simmons, Mom. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And hey, copy the presentation. How do we get that? Like that? Yeah, actually, we're, yeah, we'll put that on the website. Yep, it's we're recording it. So you guys can share it with others, neighbors in the area. <clears throat> but we have to have our more tech savvy folks do that. So <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be me. No offense taken. We can, uh, <laughs> we can put that on the uh, Spring Creek Facebook page as well. So a link to that. Yep. So if there aren't any more questions regarding the public access, which was what we were here to talk about, yes, you guys can cut loose. If you have other questions that may not be related to that, I'll hang around. I'll answer any that I can. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you guys for coming tonight. Thanks, Thank you, Matt. Thank you. 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 Thank you